Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to break down the Marvel's awesome new trailer. So much to love. This movie looks great. There's all kinds of Easter eggs. There's so many ramifications to the timeline. Lots to discuss. So let's dive right in and see what we can find out. So right off the bat, we get a Marvel logo that is swapped, which makes sense since much of uh, the, the movie deals with swapping of powers, swapping of positions, etc. So slowly, the Marvel logo switches over, gets itself back in order, and we get, you know, a new logo. I love the fact they keep changing these logos in the different shows and different movies. Very cool. Keep it up, Marvel. Love it. All right, so we open with the Sabre Space Station. Yet another acronym, right? I, I, I've Googled everywhere. I can't find SABRE. If anybody knows what that acronym stands for, please leave me in the comments. I'd love it. Uh, we know it's over Earth. They give us that. They even give us the time, but not the date. Darn it. Give us the date. Uh, but anyway, an interesting little thing. Notice to the left of the station, uh, you see a jump point opening. So clearly, uh, th this means Earth is working with other planets now. Pretty cool. And we notice all the different ships uh, leaving uh, the station, docking at the station, etc. So pretty cool. Now, in the comics, there is a, a station called the Peak, which is the headquarters of S.W.O.R.D. orbiting Earth. So I'm presuming that Saber is still part of S.W.O.R.D. It just, they're giving it the name Saber, just like this was called the Peak. In fact, Saber, S.W.O.R.D., right? All the same thing. But all right, that's kind of cool. And it does seem like this is the same space station that we saw in the end credit scene of Far From Home. So this is a clip from that. And notice there are ships uh, you know, taking off from uh, the space station, etc. and Fury's walking around there. A lot more about Fury on this station coming up. So keep, keep in mind that. All right. So one of the cool things we see, too, in one of the scenes is Fury still has his pager. Notice on his desk over to the far right, boom, that's the pager that he uses to contact Captain Marvel. So that's a fun little Easter egg. Very cool to see that still hanging out there. All right, so uh, that jump point, I'm guessing at some point it gets stuck because this sure looks like Monica is going to investigate the jump point. And notice she's got on a spacesuit, which is going to be incredibly convenient <laughs> considering a swap coming up. So she touches it and boom, she switches places with Kamala. So now it's Kamala inside the spaceship, the spacesuit which that would not have ended up well had Maria not been in a spacesuit. And I love that she uh, hollers out, is this an Avengers test? She is going to be so much fun in this movie. Her just uh, doughy-eyed wonder that she approaches everything with of just so excited, so glad to be a part of it. it it's going to be amazing. She is the ultimate uh, fan uh, of, of everything Avengers, uh, Nick Fury, and of course, Captain Marvel. So cannot wait to see her in this movie. Okay, Monica, on the other hand, where did she end up? Well, it looks like she's being shot out of a jump point onto a planet. And whether this is a Kree planet or not, um, there, we're going to see some Kree warriors, but I don't know what planet uh, she's ending up on. Now, she's wearing whatever she had on underneath that uh, spacesuit and uh, lands on the planet. It looks like that was not a pleasant landing, not a superhero landing. And like I mentioned, here comes Kree soldiers. Now, some Kree soldiers are, or some Kree members are pink-skinned, and obviously some are blue. And they have their weapons there and their helmets. Keep, keep in mind those helmets, because we're going to see those helmets a lot throughout. Uh, in fact, here's a scene from much later, because Monica seems to be wearing a different outfit. And there they are again. Uh, on the left there, you can see the helmet. So I don't know when this takes place uh, in the actual movie, but in the trailer, uh, they just kind of shoved a bunch of scenes together, honestly. But I wanted you to see this so you could see that, that they are continually meeting up with these soldiers, and we're going to see them again later on. All right, so Monica uses her powers, and of course, that's going to cause another swap. This time, she seems to be swapping with Captain Marvel. Now they should, and in fact, this scene we now know is part of the movie and was just pulled out of the movie uh, and and put into one of the end credit scenes of the Miss Marvel series. But I'm not real sure these swaps are being shown in order because that seems odd. I mean, we saw that it was Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel that swapped, not Captain Marvel and uh, Monica Rambeau. So if you watch the trailer, you can tell they just kind of threw a bunch of stuff together, which is fine. Uh, we don't need an exact order, obviously. But we do know that eventually Nick Fury, now uh, with uh, the eye patch, and, and Monica Rambeau show up uh, at the Kamala uh, Kamala's home, the Khan home. And this is kind of cool. Notice in the middle, uh, of, uh, the lower middle, there's a dude tied up and gagged. And that is definitely one of the Kree soldiers, because look at his uh, shoulder. He's got the same little shoulder fin that all the soldiers were wearing. So at some point during the swaps, maybe one of the soldiers touched 
whoever was swapping and going to the, to the con home, and he got sucked in, which is pretty wild to think they're actually bringing other people with them. It's kind of like Nightcrawler could teleport uh, other people as long as he was in contact with them. So pretty cool. Uh, and you can see the damage from the fight. I mean, look at the damage on the floor. Look at the damage on the green wall there uh, behind Miss Khan on her left. Um, yeah, something. So, so, there was a big battle in their house. Their house is going to need some redecorating after all of this. So then uh, Kamala is trying to show, oh yeah, I have powers. Here's how my powers work. And boom, we get another swap. This one bringing in Captain Marvel, presumably for a second time, which is why she's so mad. <laughs> Like, not here again, my gosh. Now, one interesting thing is, some people have theorized it's a three-way swap every time. I don't think it's always a three-way swap, because notice, on the right, there's Monica Rambeau. She did not swap. So it must have something to do with whoever's using their powers at the time, potentially. So anyway, very interesting. And then where did Kamala go? Well, Kamala landed wherever Captain Marvel was, which presumably is on a Kree ship. And there's our buddy, uh, Goose, the Flurkin. He's back. Well... I guess it could be Goose, too, because I don't know how long Flurkin live. If they live as long as a cat does, then <laughs> that ain't Goose. But who knows? Flurkin may last a long time. And of course, Flurkin's going to Flurkin. So he spits out those tentacles and grabs, yep, there they are again, more of those Kree soldiers. You can see the one guy's got the helmet on. So bye-bye, Kree soldiers. Hope you find a way out of that Flurkin. You're going to be in there for a while. I want to know what it's like inside. That would be fascinating. It's kind of like Doctor Who's ship, the TARDIS. It's, it's bigger, way bigger inside than it is on the outside, clearly. But anyway, it'd be interesting to see what is, what's happening. Where do they go? Are they sitting somewhere? Are they in his, inside his body? Or are they just sent to another dimension? I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to let me know because I do not understand exactly how Flurkins work. All right, so see you later, soldiers. And also, look at this. How cute is that? A bunch of baby Flurkin. They couldn't be any problem at all, right? They're so cute, little kitties. Yeah, don't make them mad. That's all I can say. Don't make them mad. All right, so then another swap is shown later in the movie, or, or in the trailer, rather. And this time, we're seeing Monica Rambeau, and notice she's kind of powering up there. So I'm wondering if she is going to learn to use her powers to fly, because in the comics, she did eventually learn to fly. And notice she's catching uh, Kamala Khan. That's the same outfit uh, that Kamala was wearing earlier, so that's definitely Kamala. I think probably we're going to see a crud load of swaps early on when they just cannot figure out what's going on and can't convince each other to stop using their powers until finally all three of them get in the same spot and can go, everybody, stop. <laughs> but yeah, I'm guessing that she's going to learn to fly. Uh, so then during one of the swaps, uh, we in, in the trailer, they showed this later, but I think really this is going to explain some of the damage in the con home because this looks like their home in the background. And at this point, it's Monica fighting one of the Kree soldiers. And notice she's starting to disappear again. So going to be awesome. The first probably 20-some minutes will be swapping galore. Uh, and then I don't know whether this is part of the swapping or not, but I just stuck it in this section for discussion uh, that somehow Kamala ends up on a ship and it pretty, does some pretty good battle techniques. Uh, presumably, again, versus a Kree, she seems to have the same shoulder pads, same outfit. So Kree, Kree soldiers are definitely uh, going to be villains throughout the whole movie. Okay. So enough of the swapping. We, we, we definitely see that they will finally get things under control. And they do end up ultimately on planet, and I'm going to go with Aladna. Again, tell me in the comments if I'm butchering that, because um, that's going to be one of the main settings. And all I can say is, can I go here to vacation? Like, wow, this is beautiful. Please, please tell me there's a, a, you know some type of a, a good a vacation package here. All right, so apparently they're big fans of Bollywood because this was a very impressive dance number. I mean, very impressive. Uh, and, and you got to wonder, do they do they play Kingo mu movies here? I mean, surely they're big Kingo fans, right? But I, I've heard rumors this is a singing planet where they only communicate through dancing and singing. I really hope that's not true. <laughs> but if it is, that's fine. I'll enjoy it as long as it's not very long in the movie. <laughs> Just make it a short sequence, please. Uh, and so the reason I was saying that eventually they're all three going to get together, obviously, and figure out, you know, the swapping so they quit swapping. Because here we do see all three of them. I mean, obviously, that's Carol underneath the crazy outfit. But look on her left, you can see Kamala. And on her right, you can see Monica. So by this time in the movie, they've all figured out what's going on and they're working together. But I want to know what on earth is going on here. I've heard rumors... Carol's getting married. I kind of doubt that. That that would seem really weird in the middle of the movie to suddenly get married, but who knows? I've heard rumors this guy has something to do with it. 
Um, and I think his name is Prince Jan. At least that's what I've seen. I can't even tell if he's a friend or a foe. Um, the rumors, some rumors were that he's the one that's going to marry Carol. So I, I mean, there is just so many different thoughts going on in a lot of this. Uh, leave it down in the comments if you have an idea of what's going on. I just know he doesn't seem very friendly right here. That's, that's all I can say. And all those people behind him don't seem very friendly. It does seem like the same planet, though, because you see those windows uh, behind uh, the, the darker window with the, arch the white architecture around it. That's what we've been seeing pretty consistently on this planet. So anyway, don't even know if he's a friend or a foe. We'll find out. I do know, however, she is going to be a foe. She apparently is our main foe, or Durban, I guess, is her name. Uh, and she's a Cree revolutionary, or she's described as that, uh, definitely one of the main villains. And notice around her, those same soldiers we've been seeing over and over again, some pink-skinned, some blue-skinned. But a lot to talk about on her. Look at her uh, right arm, and you will see what sure looks like a bangle. And in fact, if you remember, in uh, Miss Marvel's series, we learned that the bangles were originally found on a severed blue arm. That sure screams Cree. That was the rumor back then, and I think for sure now we're seeing the other bangle. Uh, Durbin has the second one. I, I guess it's also possible at this point she's stolen Kamala's, but I really doubt it. I don't think they're going to do that to us. That would be mean. This, this is the other bangle, so we're finally going to see them united. And you wonder what happens if Miss Marvel ends up getting both of them. That'll be wild. Something else to notice, though, is Durbin has the same type of weapon that Ronan had. Uh, remember back in his time, both in the first Captain Marvel movie and then uh, when he finally perished in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Volume 1. So to her, um, to, the, to the right in the picture there, but actually physically to her left, you see what looks like, I mean, Ronan, but it's not. It's just another one of the accusers, presumably. But I'm guessing she's got she's got the power stick, so she, she's got the hammer. She's in charge. Um so yeah, she's, she's going to be our main villain, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this all goes down. I'm wondering if she wants revenge for what Carol did to the Kree Empire in the first movie. Perhaps. We've kind of been waiting for a follow-up on that, so we'll see. All right. Uh, also, will we get a payoff for this Easter egg? We've been waiting forever. Uh, this was during Far From Home when Nick Fury's talking to Maria Hill, and you kind of got to turn on closed captioning to tell what he says. It's very quiet. But he says, I thought Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. We've always been wondering, who, who are these Kree sleeper, sleeper cells? Now, this movie came out in 2019. So we're talking, we've been waiting four years for a payoff on this Easter egg. I really hope they pay it off. Are there sleeper cells on Earth? Or are there sleeper cells throughout the galaxy? What was he talking about? So let's hope we do get that answer. All right. Love, love, love seeing all the Marvels together finally teaming up. This is when they're flying in the spaceship. You know, Captain Marvel's kind of just takes it all in. I've been, been there, done that. Monica loves it. Just look at look at that glee on her face because she loves to fly. This is just awesome for her. And I think Kamala probably needs to change her pants after this. <laughs> I love it. Man, Kamala is going to be so awesome in this movie. All of them. All three of them together will be. But Kamala is going to add so much life uh, to, to everything. All right. Also, will we finally get a resolution to this conflict? This was brought up in WandaVision when Jimmy Woo um, and Darcy and uh, Monica were discussing who could have beaten Thanos. And Wu brings up Captain Marvel, obviously, but it's, because surely she, I mean, Captain Marvel almost did beat him. And as soon as he brings her up, Boy, Monica shuts it down. We are not talking about her. So there's been a lot of questions uh, and theories on why is uh, Monica mad? One very likely theory is because her mother died while Monica was blipped, if you remember, and Carol wasn't there. Or was she? I've heard rumors there may be flashbacks, and we'll see that Carol was. But right now, Monica and Carol, or at least Monica doesn't really like Carol. Carol probably doesn't even know Monica's upset. But I'm assuming they'll patch it all together and, and everything will be fine because one way or another, they are in this adventure together. So really cool uh, look on the ship as they're flying to wherever, through a jump point. And eventually, we will see that they will learn to use their swapping uh, to their advantage. What, what began, began as a limitation now becomes actually an advantage. So watch this. This is really cool. So they seem to be fighting uh, that... Uh, you know, a Cree revolutionary from earlier. We're going to talk a little bit more about why it doesn't really look like her, but uh, but I'm sure it is. But anyway, notice she's firing at Kamala. Kamala uses her powers and slowly just 
vanishes and in comes Monica. That's pretty cool. That's going to be really cool. Um, so yeah, the reason I think it is that same revolutionary is notice she's got the bangle on. She's seeming, seemingly switched arms. I think it was on her right arm before. Um, but her outfit, number one, her outfit does not look the same as the outfit she was wearing earlier. And honestly, her hair looks lighter and her skin tone looks lighter. So much so the people stand, I've seen some people comment saying, oh, they're fighting Carol. Because honestly, in this little, you know, freeze frame here, that does kind of look like Carol. But we know it's not because we will then see Carol fighting her. You know, there's Kamala, uh, but also Carol. So they're not fighting Carol. Carol is fighting this other person. I just don't know why her hair and skin tone looks a little different than earlier. But nonetheless, it's all good. And then it seems like Carol is using the hammer. Notice in her arms there, she's using the, the, the hammer weapon. So I'm not sure why, unless maybe she didn't want to use her powers because she didn't want to swap at this point. So they're using their, they're, they use their powers to swap when it benefits them. And otherwise, they <laughs> crack down with the hammer. So, and then it, uh, I love at, at some point, whether it's at the end or, the, or in the middle, uh, Kamala, man, you just gotta love Kamala. She's so happy to be part of the team. We're, we're a team, right? And Monica says, oh, no, 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 we're not a team. And Carol says, we're not a team. Well, guess what? You're a team, guys, you're a team. As, as far as we're concerned, you're a team. But yeah, there's gonna be so much fun seeing them all together, using their powers together, playing off each other, really looks to be an awesome movie. Okay, so now I want to shift to when does this thing happen in the timeline? I mean, look at these three images of Fury. On the left, from Far From Home, in the middle, from Secret Invasion, and on the right, from the Marvels. I'm really struggling putting all these together. I mean, first of all, Far From Home, he's got a you know dark beard, no gray. Now, maybe he was dyeing it, but a dark beard, eye patch, and it's very well trimmed. Secret Invasion, totally gray beard, no eye patch, very unkempt beard. And then in the Marvels, gray, eye patch, and a little better shaven beard. So when do these all happen? Okay, so let's try to put all the pieces together to see if we can come up with a timeline here. So we know that Monica um, has been gone from Earth very likely gone from Earth since the end of WandaVision. Because remember this a lady approached her who ends up being a scroll and says, I was sent by an old friend, referring to Fury, uh, of your mother's, referring to, Mon or to Maria Rambeau. And then when asked, where am I supposed to go? She says, up there. So we'd always been assuming this was referring to S.W.O.R.D., although now we know it's called the Saber Space Station, and that's where Monica took off. Okay, so we know that. That was in WandaVision. We know that Kamala was shown switching powers with um, uh, Captain Marvel, and it's during her school year. Because notice her mother was, just before they switched places, her mother shouts up, that does not sound like science to me. So that's important from a timing standpoint. We know that this is sometime during Kamala's school year, presumably the same school year as in the series, her junior year. All right. Then we know that Everett Ross is on the run after Wakanda Forever. And hang with me on why this is important. But if you remember at the end of Wakanda Forever, he was rescued um, and uh, then from there on was on the run. Well, that's important because he is still on the run in Secret Invasion. Okay, so that's helpful. So we know that the Secret Invasion is going to be after Wakanda Forever. We also know from Wakanda Forever that we see this little blurb about President Ritson. Notice the ticker down at the bottom there, President Ritson signed trade pact with New Asgard. So the point is, he is the president in Wakanda Forever. And in Secret Invasion, I'm guessing he is no longer the president. Either he is killed or found out to be a scroll. But notice the newspaper article lets you see what he looks like. And then that is his presidential uh, convoy getting blasted. So let's put all this together then. What do we know? Well, we know that WandaVision's in November of 2023. We know that uh, Far From Home, which we've seen many mentions to, is in June to July of 2024. Wakanda Forever is in May of 2025. And Kamala, in, in, in her series, Miss Marvel, uh, is in school, at, and it's the beginning of her school year, September to October of 2025. Okay, so those are all the playing pieces. So Secret Invasion has to be after Wakanda Forever, so it has to be after May of 2025, and then I'm pretty sure that it is the next appearance of Fury. Uh, hang with me on why I'm saying that, but uh, that's my guess. So I think Secret Invasion has to be after both of those. And then obviously the Marvels is sometime after WandaVision, and then sometime after Miss Marvel's series. 
which is kind of wild to think that Monica Rambeau has been gone since November of 2023. It's been two years, uh, probably, um, since we've seen her, because we know it's got to be after October of 2025. So yeah, two years. Wow. Okay. I think Secret Invasion is in October of 2025. Why do I say that? Well, because they're wearing cold uh, weather outfits, uh, trench coat, these uh, Fury's really heavily dressed. Um, we know it's after Wakanda Forever, and I just don't think it's going to push into 2026. I could be wrong, but there's a lot of political drama movies coming out that tie into Secret Invasion, Captain America, New World Order, and Thunderbolts, uh, as well as others, uh, Armor Wars probably. So I just think earlier the better. So I'm going to guess it's in October 2025. I'm going to guess Secret Invasion leads into the Marvels. We'll talk more about that in a second, but yeah, I, that's my guess. So that means the Marvels has to be after October of 2025 for a couple of different reasons there. I honestly think it's going to be into 2026. I would prefer we just stick in 2025 and try to catch up with the real-time year. Um, in other words, get the MCU caught up to uh, present day in the real world. But keep in mind, a lot of people have said, oh, it's got to be right after the end credit of Miss Marvel. But there's many times there's a time a gap. Many times we see end credit scenes that are three, four months after. It just has to be in the same school year. And I really think it's going to be in warmer weather because we see everybody wearing what looks like warmer weather clothes. So I'm just going to throw out April 2026 as a guess. Now, that means Secret Invasion is before the Marvels. I, and that seems to make sense because I, it just would be so shocking for Secret Invasion to come out and then for them to move the Marvels, which is before Secret Invasion. I That just makes my head hurt a little. But I'm still trying to reconcile why is Nick Fury so different? But my guess is he goes from being the grizzled, frustrated Nick Fury in Secret Invasion. They win, right? Surely the good guys win. And then he shows up in the Marvels and he's in a much better place. So a uh, much better place emotionally, mentally. So, okay, that's my guess on the timeline. Have at it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, particularly, when do you think uh, what's the order of Secret Invasion and the Marvels? And when do you think they occur in the timeline? I am really excited about this movie. It's going to be great. Uh, the trailer looks fantastic. All right, as I mentioned uh, quite often, we do have a Discord server. We'd love to have you join uh, folks from around the globe. So conversations going on 24 seven. And I will put a pinned comment with a link to join if you'd like to join. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-growing ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.